Hello, ladies and gentlemen. It is your host with the most, AvriLR32 here, showing you guys the worst Yu-Gi-Oh deck I've ever played in my freaking life. So please, for the love of all that is good and crystal beastie, smash the ever-living boo-boo stain out of that crystal subscribe button so we can climb even further beyond the 1K ladder. I just woke up a little bit ago, so I'm still very tired. So if I'm not very energetic, I apologize. I want to uh, get this deck profile done so I can go sell these cards and, you know, go throw my head in a dishwashing pan or something. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, we, we played Conclave Control. We, we, we played the Neshi special, the luscious beard man himself special. Huge thank you to Neshi for taking the time to send me his side deck options, uh, like how he would side deck and stuff. Neshi, I really do appreciate it. I appreciate you also uh, <laughs> letting me bitch to you on Discord um, about my matchups and things. Um, something I do want to mention too before I get into my matchups, obviously this is Conclave Control, like they're nothing special. The way that Conclave was ruled at this regional was different than how it is ruled in the OCG and how it works on EDO Pro. And I got to give EDO Pro credit. The people that have put that simulator together, they know their rulings, um, but they ran into an issue with Crystal Conclave because the way that it's ruled, at least in OCG and on Yugipedia, whatever you see online, is that if a Crystal Beast is destroyed in your main monster zone, then you can activate a set Conclave and use the effect to summon a Crystal Beast. That's not how it was ruled here. They said you have to first have it face up. So that helped me lose a game one against Pure Cash Tira, which, I mean, at that point, we're playing against Pure Cash Tira. The deck is dog shit. Um, so that was a thing. I don't know if it's maybe ruled differently to YCS, but that's how it works in the OCG. That's not how it worked here, um, which I'm not like angry at the judges or anything. I actually knew the head judge. Shout out to Raymond. He's a local Jackal player. Really cool guy. Awesome. All of the judges were great. The event itself ran great. I didn't have any a-hole players who were trying to cheat me or stall me out. Everybody was great. Um, I mean, th this, this event ran very smoothly. So huge thank you to the event organizers and the judges for helping all this get put together. Despite what my record is, I want to give a huge thank you to all those people because without the judges and the event organizers, we wouldn't have a regional. So really a huge thank you to all of them. At the end of the day, y'all don't get thanked enough, I feel. So thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. A million thank yous. Now, going into my matchups, round one, I played against Pure Sprite. Game one, I ran out of Crystal Ultimates, so we ended up getting our Boo Boo Stain pushed in. And then game two, we bricked on like Double Bridge of the Heart and some other shit. So I was like, well, my asshole's getting blown into the next event, uh, and then the next event hall next door. Um, round two, we played against uh, Flunder. It was against uh, Mike Sanders, who's a, a well-known good player uh, in Florida. Uh, years ago, he was actually uh, like trolling me on on my YouTube and like saying I'm a bad Yu-Gi-Oh player and stuff because I had heard through the grapevine allegedly he's a cheater and I commented on one of his old Necroz deck profiles that someone did of him saying allegedly this guy's a cheater and he got pissed off. He didn't know who the hell I was, but it was delicious to get a draw with him. I'm not really a big fan of him, but you know what? Bygones be bygones. That was years ago. No need to hold a grudge. You know, that's, that's his life. <laughs> uh, round three, we didn't have a no show. So we finally got our first fucking win. So we're one, one and one. Uh, and then next round, I think that's when we went against uh, Cash Tira. So I lost. We were 1-1-2. Then I had another no-show. I was 2-1-2. Then I lost to Sword Soul. I was 2-1-3. And then we had another no-show. I was 3-1-3. And I'm like, yeah, no, I'm going to go throw this deck on out in the garbage. So with all that being said, let's go ahead and dive on into the deck profile. I'm sure someone will leave in the comments a little timestamp for when the profile actually starts. So thank you for that in advance, if somebody does. We're playing three copies of our Crystal Stratos. Uh, card's pretty good. You can dump the Crystal Beast Rainbow Dragon and get pluses. Uh, just off of this and hitting Crystal Beast Rainbow Dragon leads you into having two level fours on board to Cowboy for game, which is actually kind of nutty. Um, two copies of Rainbow Dragon along with the one copy of Cobalt. I'm sorry, my allergies are killing me this morning. Uh, we did this because we were bricking on the third dragon. Uh, two is fine on this. Uh, you know, yeah, it's 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 a thing. Uh, Carbuncle, because it's not once per turn, unless you special summon. Uh, one copy of Rainbow Dark Dragon. Literally, I'm only playing this because I play exactly seven darks with different names. Three in the main and four in the extra. So, instead of it being a brick 100% of the time, if it's the regular Rainbow Dragon, it's only a brick 99% of the time. <laughs> and it looks cooler. Uh, and then we're playing the Buy Steel Package. Everyone was asking me, Avery, how'd this come up? It didn't come up once. I didn't see the damn cards once. Literally, I never drew them. The only time I did draw them was when I had the no-show. So I'm like, ha ha, uh, that would be my luck. Two copies of Fenrir. We side at the third. Card's good. And then finally, 
for the creme de la creme, we're playing three shifter. Uh, it, it it doesn't matter. The, the deck is still garbage. Oh, it can play shifter. Yeah, it's still garbage. Two bond, you side deck one out. Uh, card's good. Jesus, that that glare, though. Uh, we're playing two copies of goods. You side deck the third. You dump the bridge of salvation when you don't open with it like I did like four or five times. Other than that, card's pretty good. Uh, three copies of Bridge of the Heart. We bricked on two of these against Sprite Game 2, round one. It's, it's whatever. It's a really good card. It gets you pluses. Three copies of Rainbow Bridge. It's a Rhoda. That's for any Crystal Spoiler Trap, and it's not once per turn. Three copies of the Broken Crystal Ultimates. You need to play three of this card. It's so good. Like, I was on two, and just three of this is just amazing. It helps you OTK. One copy of mine, because it's good. One copy of Necro Valley. This kind of hurts Sword Soul, and then my dumb ass didn't end on a Baguska with it, so it was like, didn't even matter. He was just able to get rid of it and pop off with his monster effects. Three copies of Prosperity. You gotta play Prosperity. I know it's expensive. You gotta play in a deck like this. Two copies of Miracle. We side it the third. It's a non once per turn Infernity Barrier. Three Conclave because it was ruled differently from OCG. And then one card that we opened up with like five times. <laughs> like, I swear, that this, this card just loved being in my hand. Oh my lord. Uh... Extra deck. One Dweller, one Baguska, one Cowboy never came up. Never came up. Tornado Dragon. Shidori never came up. Dugaris never came up. Uh, Chakanine, Borbo, and Zeus never came up. Masquerina made once. Cool. We paid $80 for this thing because Cool Stuff Games didn't have any other copies except for one cop. Excuse me, one copy of the $80 Secret Rare. The fact that we were, that they were charging $80 blows my mind. One Unicorn, one Wind Channeler because we side deck Secret Village. Uh, Mud Dragon and Garua for our super pilot targets. These, uh, the Garua and Mud Dragon just came up a couple times. It's pretty good. Um, and we would have beat Flunder too, like just through Super Poly, but he used Dreaming Town to flip our stuff face down. So, and the Wind Channel was really easy because if you just open up Sapphire Pegasus, you dump, you put the Dragon in the back row, banish just summon Cobalt. There's your two wins or your two level fours. You got two monsters to make the Wind Channeler, and then if you have like Secret Village in hand or a way to dump Bridge of Salvation to get to it, then you have them locked out of spells right there. For the side deck, we're playing one Fenrir, because uh, it's good. Uh, three copies of Super Poly, depending on your matchup, you side this going first or second. Three copies of Cosmic Cyclone, because we want to auto-win against Runic. Feather Duster, because it's good back row hate. The third Foolish Barrel Goods, uh, after game one, you usually side deck out a Bond, your three Shifter, and the three Buy Steel, and you go more like Crystal Beast Stun Heavy, because you really want to see this, so that you can hit the Bridge of Salvation and get a Necro Valley set up or a Secret Village. Secret Village, because no one was expecting this card. Like, I would play this, like... I searched a secret village against a guy, and he's like, Secret Village, you're playing a spellcaster now? And then I make the Wind Charmer link and then play Secret Village. He's like, Oh, that's your spellcaster. <laughs> so it, it was it was delicious. Uh, one miracle never came up. A pointer never came up. And then three copies of Evenly. Guess what? It never came up. <laughs> so the the moral of the story with this deck. You can play this at locals, and you can maybe piss somebody off because you're playing a deck that isn't meta. Do not take this to a regional unless your name is Neshi and you have a luscious man beard. <laughs> um, don't take this to a YCS. You'll, you'll get stomped. Uh, you know what, Barry? Just don't take it anywhere. Just Unless your name is Neshi, go throw this deck on out in the garbage. Go play a Shizu Rune. Go play a Shizu Tear. Go play a Shizu Nachuria. Like, go play anything else that is not named Crystal Beast, please. Do not end up like your boy Ariel R32, who just looks like he's garbage at the game. Even though I know I could take something meta and just do much better. But I didn't have time to build anything else. And I wasn't going to play pure Rune and just lose to Cosmic Cyclone. So it's like, do I take something that's off the radar that I might be able to kind of do well with? And, you know, pe take the Pepsi challenge and risk it for the biscuit? Or do we, you know, play pure runic and just get stomped? So I took something I thought maybe I would do better with than taking something I just felt like I knew I was going to get stomped with. So that was my reasoning behind it. I guess I had fun playing the deck. It's just I hate playing garbage decks. I, you know, it, it is what it is. Our homie Valley D was like, you're going to go 2-3 drop. And I was like, joke's on you, bitch. We went 3-1-3 three, three, drop. <laughs> So we we proved the homie wrong, but it, it is what it is. Just, if anything, learn from your homie's mistake. Do not play Crystal Beast. Don't buy the structure deck. It just go go donate to charity. Go go click the super thanks button on this on this video because all of our ad revenue and stuff just go towards my medical expenses for my cancer stuff anyway. So um, but all jokes aside. Guys, 
Thank you for watching. Uh, let me know down in the comments below what you think. Um, our dad did much better than us. He went 5-2-2 two, two with Mystic Miner. We're going to be covering that profile later today, so be sure that you're subscribed to the channel so that you don't miss it. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.